All right, welcome back everyone to Thursday's class. Let's take a nice comfortable seat. So let's get grounded. Um, just settle in, take a comfortable seat, close your eyes. Take a big deep breath in, let it out through the mouth. Another big deep breath in through the nose. Out through the mouth. In through your nose. Out through the mouth. Settling in. Beginning to notice all of the different sounds right here in this room. Acknowledge them and let them be. Notice all of the different noises and distractions outside of the room, within the room, around us. Acknowledge them and let them be. Become aware of your body. Notice the different sensations that are coming up. Acknowledge them and let them be. Notice if there's anywhere that you're holding, clenching, or tightening that you can just let go. Follow your breath in through your nose, out through your nose. Beginning to cultivate a strong ujjayi in through the nose, out through the nose. Let your breath be your guide as you move through this practice today. If at any time your breathing becomes labored, it's a sign to back off, to rest in the posture. We'll use the breath to yoke the mind and the body. Open your eyes, drop your chin towards your chest, relax your head and neck. Feel your way into this moment, lifting your head up, come back to neutral, lift your chin towards the ceiling, look up. Bring your head to neutral. Drop your right ear to your right shoulder. Now you can bring your right hand to your left ear if that feels right in your body. Just gently breathing here, eyes opened or eyes closed. Just breathe your way in. Come back to a neutral spine. Release your right hand down, drop your left ear to your left shoulder. Now taking your right hand to, or your left hand to your right ear, just relax into the shape. Breathe your way in. Come back to center. So from this grounded and neutral place, inhale, arms lift up. Look up, reach your fingertips as far as they'll go. And then as you bring your fingertips down, reach through your fingers as far as they go. Drop your gaze with your eyes looking down. Inhale, arms lift up, begin to look up, trying to link the arms and the head as you lift up, look up, bring hands together overhead, exhale, hands come down, reaching through your fingers as far as they'll go. Inhale, lift up, look up. Exhale, hands come down, reach out through your fingers. Inhale, arms lift up, look up, now twist to your right. Right hand comes behind you, left hand to your knee. On your inhale, lengthen up through the top of your head. Exhale, gaze over your back shoulder. 
So for those of you that want a little extra shoulder work, focus on how this feels in your shoulder. Try to use the twist to be more of a shoulder opener than a twist in the lumbar. And even if you feel that twist in the lumbar, notice we're not cranking on your low back here. We're just lifting to lengthen and then twist. Big deep breath in. Exhale out nice and slow. Look forward and unwind. Inhale, arms lift up. Reach up and twist to the left. Left hand behind you, right hand to your knee. Lengthen through the crown of your head. Exhale, gaze over your back shoulder. Breathe your way into your shoulder or your low back. Let your inhale take you taller or longer, and your exhale might be an opportunity to twist a little bit deeper. Breathe your way in. Slow and steady, looking forward, unwind, come back to that neutral stock spine. Plant your left hand down, right arm up and over. So from here, really anchor down through your sit bones. Lift your chest towards the ceiling. See how my chest opens, lifting up. Look up and reach over as far as you can go. Breathe deeply, connect to the breath. Come back to center, plant your right hand down, left arm up and over. Check in with your, your chest and your torso as you open up towards the ceiling. Big breathing. Come back to center. We're gonna come onto our hands and knees. We're coming into tabletop position. Wrist directly underneath your shoulders, knees underneath your hips. So find that strong tabletop position, neutral spine, drop your belly, lift your heart, move your way in. Moving in and out of cat cow, breathing at your pace, letting the breath initiate the movement. On your exhale, pulling your belly button towards the ceiling, dropping your head and neck. Feel your way in. Come back to a neutral spine. Okay, so from here, we're gonna do another shoulder opener. I'm not sure how this is gonna translate on the video, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk my knees back a little bit and I'm going to keep my elbows in close to my body. So we're in that plank position with our knees down. We're gonna lower down, keeping your elbows nice and close. Now, what I'm gonna do from here is I'm gonna extend my right hand out directly at a 90 degree angle. So from here, I'm going to twist to the right. So what you're gonna see is I'm gonna twist to the right, coming back. So you can control how much of a shoulder opener you're getting. Just make sure that that, that arm is out at a directly, just a direct, out from the socket is what you're doing. Straight out, twisting into the shape and breathing here. Keep breathing. Unwind, and you're gonna come back to center here. We're gonna bring our hands down on either side of our shoulders, tops of the feet on the mat. Trace your nose along the mat, lift up through the top of your head, lift your head up, really press your feet into the mat as you lift up. 
Exhale, coming down, bringing your left cheek to the mat. Straighten your left arm out straight from the socket. And I'm going to move a little bit further away from the wall. And then just slowly twist into this side, breathing into this shape, relaxing here. Big, deep breath in. Slow exhale out. Coming back to center, releasing your feet to the mat. Once again, bringing your hands directly underneath your shoulders. Trace your nose along the mat. Press the tops of your feet into the mat as you lift your upper body up towards the ceiling. Lift up through the crown of your head. And exhale your head back down. Push your hips to your heels. Coming into child's pose, you can choose either knees together or knees apart. Press your hips back, bring your forehead to the mat, take a big deep breath in, let it out nice and slow. Soften whatever you can soften. Just notice how it feels just to be present right here in this moment in child's pose. Connecting to your breath, in through your nose, out through your nose, being present, grounded, centered, right here in this moment. Feeling all the cells of your body alive, connected. Just that act of your forehead being on the mat is actually activating you. It's giving your, your body a signal to get out of fight or flight mode. Walk your hands over to the right, reaching as far as you can to the right, relaxing into the shape, breathing into your left lung, your left ventricle. Walking your hands back to center, pausing here, one full breath in, one long, slow breath out. Then walk your hands over to the other side, breathing into the right ventricle. Walking your hands back. One last breath here in center. Tuck your toes, lift your hips, downward facing dog. Come high up on your toes, lift your hips towards the ceiling. Press your heels back and down. Now you can bend your knees as deeply as you need to to let your low back relax and release. You can pedal your feet. You can shake your head no. You can nod it yes. You can hang out right here, breathing your way into your downward facing dog. Look between your hands, walk your feet up to the top of the mat. Bring your hands to your shins, press and lengthen, flat back, long spine, Fold forward, ooh, Tanasana, melt everything down. Bring your hands to your shins, press and lengthen, long spine forward. And fold. Take hold of your elbows and hang or rock from side to side. Let it all relax and release.
Release your hands down outside of your feet. Now, ragdoll up one vertebra at a time, nice and slow, slowly, slowly, slowly. Let your head and neck be the last to come up. And then lift your shoulders up into your ears, relax your shoulder blades down your back. Find your Tadasana, your mountain pose. Feet directly underneath your hips. Breathing your way in. So take your weight forward and back and side to side. And play, find that place of equanimity right smack dab in the middle. Inhale, arms sweep up. Bring hands together overhead. Reach straight up. Reach back, little tiny back bend, and then fold forward, ooh, Tanasana. Inhale, halfway, lengthen and fold. Plant your hands and step back to plank. Hold your plank. We're just gonna lower down nice and slow. Knees, chest and chin come down. Leave your booty in the air, inchworm forward. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, tuck your toes, press back, downward facing dog. Come high up on your toes, lift your hips, press your heels back and down. Connect to your breath. Five breaths right here. Look forward between your hands, walk your feet up to the top of the mat, bring your hands to your shins, press and lengthen forward, fold. Inhale, lift up, reach up. Exhale, hands to your heart center. Inhale, arms drop down, sweep back up, swan dive forward, ooh, Tanasana. Inhale to lengthen and fold, plant your hands, step back, to plank. Bring your knees, chest, and chin down on your mat. Inchworm forward. Little cobra, lift up. Exhale, downward facing dog. Step your left foot to the top of the mat. We're coming into Virabhadrasana 1, Warrior 1. Plant your back foot down, front knee over top of the ankle, and arms reach straight up. Now check in with your core. Hug everything in towards the midline, lift up. Now your hips, don't ever let somebody tell you that your hips need to be towards the top of the mat. You can see what happens to my heel when I try to do that. So my back heel is down and our hips are actually tracking more towards the edge. So engage your core, lift up. Breathe here. Relax your shoulders. You can lift up, you can engage your core even while relaxing your shoulders. Open to Virabhadrasana 2, which means my hands are down. Tracking into that front knee, making sure the knee is directly over top of your ankle. Windmill your hands to the top of your mat, step back to plank. Bring your knees down, bring your chest and your chin down. Inhale, upward, exhale, downward. Look forward, step your right foot to the top of the mat, Virabhadrasana one on this side. Plant your back heel down, front knee over top of your ankle, arms lift up. Just breathe your way in, settle in, relax into the posture. Engage your core, press that back heel down. Open to your Virabhadrasana stance. Your arms come down, we're gazing over top of the nail of our middle finger of our right hand. Core is engaged, belly lifting even here. Windmill your hands to your top of your mat. Step back to plank. Bring your knees down. Bring your chest and your chin down. Lift up, little cobra. 
Press back, child's pose. Bring your forehead to the mat, take a big breath in. Let it out, sigh it all out. Tuck your toes, lift your hips, downward facing dog. Come high up on those toes, lift your hips, press your heels back and down. Look forward, step your left foot to the top of the mat. We're coming into a low runner's lunge. Melt the toes of your back foot, hands on either side of your foot. Sink in, breathe your way in. Just pausing here and noticing the sensations that are coming up in your body. Tuck the toes of your back foot, lift the leg back up, step back to downward facing dog. Come high up on your toes, lift your hips, press your heels back and down. Relax your head and neck. Look forward, step your right foot to the top of the mat. Melt your back knee down, melt the toes of your back foot down. Breathe your way in on this side. Really begin to notice the sensations that are coming up for you. Try not to judge them, just notice and observe. Okay, tuck the toes of your back foot, lift your back leg up, step back to downward facing dog, come high up on your toes, lift your hips, press your heels back and down, relax your head and neck. Okay, we're gonna move into pigeon. So if pigeon, if what we're about to do doesn't feel good, you can do the reclining pigeon portion, which we did on Tuesday's class. So what we're doing is we are coming forward. We're bringing our right knee to like the edge of the right side of the mat. Some people can get their shin parallel to the mat. That's not a requirement. Maybe what we're working towards, but don't tweak anything trying to get there. So really taking a moment to settle into your pigeon. So you can take a blanket or a bolster and put it up underneath your glute to give you a little bit of height that will help make things feel a little bit better. Now from here, we're gonna lift up, lengthening up through the top of our head. Now our chin, we're gonna lead with our chin, we're gonna do a couple waves. So we're gonna lead with our chin as we come down. Bring your chin in towards your chest, lead with the back of the neck on the way up. Take two more waves with your breath coming down. On your inhale, lift up. Exhale, come down. Inhale, lift up. And then come all the way down. So you can start on the forearms. This might be where you stay. You know, you might actually even stay up here. It just depends on how your body's feeling today. Check in. There's no wrong way to do it. Come down onto the forearms if that feels right. You could come down onto a pillow. You could come down on to books. So find the level that feels right in your body because wherever you are is exactly where you need to be. You can come all the way down. Can this melt into the shape? Breathe your way in. And like I said, if this is just a little bit too much in your body, you can do the reclining pigeon portion of that. And that would be like this. So coming back like this onto your back. That's always a modification that you can take. Proud pigeons lifting up. 
Tuck the toes of your back foot, step back to downward facing dog. Notice how one leg might feel different from the other leg now. Breathe your way into this different shape, noticing the different sensations. Notice the difference between the two legs. Looking forward, step your left foot forward into pigeon on this side. You can always take reclining pigeon on your back. Not all sides are the same. Breathe your way in. Lengthening up, proud pigeons puffing out your chest and your heart. Lead with your chin as you come on down. Bring your chin in towards your chest. Lead with the back of your neck. So coming down and lifting up. Coming down and lift up. Last one, moving with your breath. And then coming down to where it feels right in your body. You might stay up. You might come down onto your forearms. You might come all the way down. Keep connecting to your breath. Let the practice be all about your breath. In through your nose, out through your nose. Feel your way in. Get curious about what you're feeling. What types of sensations are coming up? Lifting up, proud pigeons, puffing out your heart and your chest. Now we're gonna pour weight into our left leg and we're gonna bring our right leg around. So I'm gonna move just so that you can see what I'm doing. And extend your legs out in front of you. Like we did on Tuesday, pull your toes back towards your body. Lift up through the crown of your head. Hands come down on either side of your hips. Really press into your feet. Lengthen through the top of your head, Dandasana, Staff Pose. Okay, so from here, we're going to lift our legs up. We're gonna do some boat pose. We all probably need core right now. So shins parallel to the ground, reaching out. You can do a gentle boat. You can choose not to sink your boat, or you can sink your boat, or you can just have your hands back here, Find what feels best for you. Breathe, try to keep your spine long. And come on down, sink your boat if that feels right to you. Hovering your legs above the mat, hovering your upper body above the mat. Lifting back up, come back to boat, lengthening up. Big breathing, core is engaged. Belly lifting, breathing here. Come on down, sink that up. Lift back up. Come on down, sink your boat. Lift up, bring your feet down, lengthening up through the top of your head. Reach your arms out, come back onto your back, nice and slow, with control. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Draw your knees in, lift your head, lift your tailbone, turn back into a little ball. Exhale your head back down, rock it out. Rock it out from side to side. All right, we're gonna bring our hands down on the mat, hands down on either side of your hips. Walk your heels back just a little. Press into your feet, lift your hips up, coming into bridge. You can hang out right here, you can bring your hands underneath you, lifting those hips up. Big breathing. Slowly coming back down, slowly, slowly, slowly. Let's so draw your knees into your chest. Lift your head, lift your tailbone, turn back into a little bowl. Exhale your head back down, rock it out from side to side. Rock it all out. Now, bring your feet together, shins parallel. Open your arms out wide like a T. 
Let your knees fall over to the right as you gently turn your head left. You can bring your right hand to your right knees to help anchor them down. Soften whatever you can soften. Fully relax into this shape, into this place. Lift your knees up to center. Let them fall over to the other side as you gently turn your head the opposite direction. Relax and let go. Look up towards the ceiling, draw your knees into your chest. Extend your legs out on the mat, arms come down at your sides, palms face up. So you'll stay in corpse pose. So make your way into the most comfortable corpse pose that you can, Shavasana. The most important pose of all of yoga. Close your eyes if that feels right to you and spin. relax whatever you can. Let go of any holding of the breath, let it all go, relax, breathe your way in. Let's do a scan of your body for anywhere you still might be holding. Try to let it go. Feel fully supported by the ground beneath you. Breathe your way in. If any thoughts come to mind, just let them go. Whatever it is, you can think about it later. Soft. And as you lay there, relaxing into this shape, I'm just gonna read a reflection from Journey to the Heart by Melody Beattie for today, March 26. Make each moment count. A picture isn't taken in a moment, stated the brochure for the Cottonwood Colorado Hotel. It's taken of a moment. It took me a long time to learn that important truth. I spent years trying to get my life together and keep it together, as though it were a solid chunk that could be arranged in a certain place, then made to stay there. It took me a long time to learn about moments. In many ways, our lives are like a movie reel made up of individual frames and single moments, each one leading into the next. It is a waste of energy to try and hold on to the moment of the past. By the time we begin reaching for them, they're gone. It is just as, it is just as poor timing to try to jump into the moments that have not yet arrived, the future. Stay in the present moment, the frame you're in now. That's the only moment where happiness, joy, and love can be found. And remember to make each moment count. So 
So when you're ready, bend your knees, bring your feet to the mat. We'll gently and carefully roll to our right sides, pausing there for just a moment, honoring the transition out of the practice as much as we honor the practice itself. And then slowly push yourself up to a nice seated position, eyes closed, hands at heart center. Yoga will teach you so much about yourself. It will help you become flexible in mind, in body, and in spirit. For that, I'm truly grateful. Thank you so much for being a part of class today. Namaste. All right, everyone. So I just wanna open it up for, we were getting a little feedback earlier, so um, I don't know about taking you all off mute necessarily, but if you have any questions, um, if there's anything that you need, go ahead and type it into the comment box. You could also take yourself off. Uh, you can put your camera on if you would like um, for the meditation portion, which will be happening next. So for the meditation portion, um, we are going to be doing a, um, a compassion meditation. And I actually need to grab that journal. It will just take me a second. But while I do that, if you'd like, go ahead and please pull your camera up so I can see your beautiful faces. Um, and I will be right back. Thank you, Cassie. So that was also a little bit more, um, probably a little less gentle. I mean, it was still gentle, but a little less gentle. I kind of gave us a little bit more sun salutations. Um, I know somebody, I don't remember who it was, said a little more core, please, yesterday. So we might be doing a little bit more core as well. Um, but this particular meditation is a meditation from Kristen Neff. If you're not familiar with Kristen Neff, I highly recommend watching her TED Talk. It's a fantastic TED Talk. She's a researcher around loving kindness and her, um, her work is just fantastic. So this is her meditation. So I'm using Kristen's meditation for today. It's called the self-compassion break. And so I talked about this yesterday with, um, when I was on a Facebook Live with Action Greensboro, but this is a great way to check in with yourself um, and to show some compassion for yourself right now. Um, you know, we all can be feeling so many different things. Um, there's so much going on in the world and whatever it is that you're feeling, it's not wrong. It's not bad. Uh, try not to judge your emotions. We can't control our emotions, but we can control our reaction to them. And self-compassion is a really, really great way to tap into that. So that's what we're going to, what we're going to do right now. I want to invite you to take the most comfortable seat that you can and you know, I'm going to have my eyes open for, for this meditation, but it's because I am working through a new meditation. But I would invite you to have either what's most comfortable for you, either closed eyes or soft gaze down at the ground that something's not, something that isn't moving. Some people like to light a candle and gaze at that candle. Whatever feels right for you, I'd invite you to take in, in that space. So get as comfortable as you can. Find a feeling of relaxation in your body. And scan your body one more time for anywhere that you might be holding, clenching, or tightening. And try to let go. And for this meditation, we need to call up a little bit of suffering. A situation in your life that is difficult for you. Maybe you're feeling stress or worry. Maybe there's a work situation or a relationship problem. Let that come to mind. 
I invite you to think about something that isn't too difficult, not overwhelming, especially if you're new to the self-compassion meditations. So let this situation come to mind and get in touch with it. What's going on? What happened? What might happen? Who said what? Let the feeling or the sensation arise in your body and let it sit in your mind's eye. Then I'm going to say a series of freezers that are designed to help us remember the three components of self-compassion when we need it most. The first phrase is, this is a moment of suffering. Bring mindful awareness to the fact that suffering is present. I invite you to find some language that speaks to you, something like, this is really hard right now, or I'm really struggling. Just say that to yourself in your mind. We're actually turning towards our difficulty, acknowledging it and naming it. This is a moment of suffering. The second phrase is, Suffering is a part of life. Reminding ourselves of our common humanity. Suffering is a part of life. And again, finding language that speaks to you. Something like, it's not abnormal to feel like this. Many people are going through similar situations. The de degrees of suffering may be different. The flavor of suffering may not be different or may be different, but suffering is a part of life. It's a part of being human. Then the third phrase is this. May I be kind to myself in this moment. And support bringing kindness to yourself by, in, I would like to invite you to perhaps put a hand on your heart or someplace on your body that helps you feel soothed and comforted. Feel the warmth of your hands, the gentle touch, letting those feelings of care stream through your fingertips. May I be kind to myself. and using any language that supports that sense of kindness. Perhaps language you would use with a good friend going through a similar situation. It might be something like, I'm here for you. It's going to be okay. I care about you. You can try calling yourself by your first name. Anything that helps you experience your own deep wish that you may be well, that you may be happy, that you may be free of suffering. I 
And taking one more big deep breath in. Let it out nice and slow. And then if it feels right, you can release your hands back down. Letting go of the practice and noticing how your body feels right now. Allowing any sensation to just be. Let those sensations be as they are. Allowing yourself to be just as you are in this moment. And when you're ready, releasing your hands, opening your eyes, coming back to this moment from wherever it is that you just went. How y'all doing? I'll let you unmute yourselves as you wanna say things to avoid feedback. Um, so if you have anything you wanna share or anything that came up for you in that practice, don't hesitate to share with us. It was relaxing. My dogs were not cooperative. <laughs> you need some compassion for your dogs. They try to participate. Has anybody, Has anybody done self test So yes. Yes. You know, there's lots of people today. Everybody must be on Zoom. I just want to say, I'm Susan, and this is the first time. And I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for being here, Susan. I'm going to plan on being back. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. So much. Sorry about the start today. Hope you have a next week. Um, thank you. Thank you. Request. Send them over. Thank you.